From the livelihood of ghosts and paintings to the true intentions of quirky scientists, we've been all over the place in the Mario universe. It seems that every topic I cover opens the door to another one, and the mysteries I started to tackle in Luigi's Mansion have only snowballed since then. However, there is one topic that remains unanalyzed, and the power behind it is quite scary to think about. During Egad's research, I strongly believe he stumbled upon something that he really shouldn't have tampered with, as it has the ability to easily ruin the world that everyone lives in. And that power comes in the form of a magic paintbrush. Now, the idea of a magic paintbrush is quite bizarre to begin with. Even though Egad has created a bunch of other odd inventions, this one in particular seems a bit out of place. Like I mentioned in my previous theory about Egad, this paintbrush has the ability to create teleportation portals, objects, and even enemies. In many ways, it is an instrument that allows someone to play God. They can create whatever they want from this paintbrush, and with a few strokes, their ideas are brought into existence. The reality of it is that this paintbrush is simply a tool, whereas the paint is where the real power is. But what exactly is this paint? And how does someone like Egad come up with it? Magical paint in the Mario universe is actually found in many games. While we have earlier titles that are focused on painting that lack this aspect, we also have the portraits in Princess Peach's Castle in Super Mario 64 to consider. Much like the paint splashes in Super Mario Sunshine, these portraits almost have a fluid-like consistency despite retaining their composure. They also act as portals to other worlds as well, similarly to Super Mario Sunshine's painted M's that allow you to teleport around the island. But what makes these paintings so special compared to the other ones in the castle? And where were these paintings purchased? While we don't have the answer to that in particular, the paintings of Luigi's Mansion have a slightly different aspect to them. They have the ability to imprison both people and spirits within their frames. And to some degree, the canvases have a fluid surface as well since Mars in particular shows us he is able to move in it. It is also important to note that this portrait also acts as a portal since Luigi was sucked inside and transported to the fight with Bowser. Beyond paint acting as portals in these three instances, there is the aspect of creation which is entirely different. Vincent Van Gore originally showed us this power by turning his ghostly paint into other spirits. And this is something Egan must have drawn inspiration from when creating his own brush. The problem with this concept is that Egad wouldn't have been able to actually utilize this ghostly brush, as it seems to be bound to Van Gore's existence. Even if he wore the ghost gown he invented, there would be no way to bring back this powerful instrument to the world of the living, as the object would still be within a different plane of existence so to speak. However, if he used a different medium, something tangible yet magical that he had access to, that would be a different story. There have been plenty of events that have taken place in the Mario timeline that would provide great knowledge that Egad could leverage for his research. Seeing as Egad set off and traveled after the past events in Partners in Time, and to acquire his ghostly collection, I imagine he explored a lot of the Mushroom World. Starting off, in the Kupahari Desert, there was a machine called Glom that was created which had the capabilities to create clones out of sand. This was part of the Nintendo adventure book Double Trouble, and these clones were absolute copies of the character that was targeted. They were equally as strong as the original character, and Mario had a difficult time fighting his clones. Whatever this machine saw, it created, and this eventually led to its downfall as it was led into a hall of mirrors within Fort Koopa of the Desert and cloned itself until the original Glom overloaded and exploded. Soon after, all the clones returned to sand. This explosion destroyed Fort Koopa in the process, and it's very possible Egad visited these ruins while exploring the world. Perhaps he drew inspiration from the scraps of the machine, or took this with him to use later in his research. If sand could be used to build controlled clones through this process, who's to say this couldn't be done with other mediums as well? However, Glom was still constrained to creating what it saw. While it was very impressive and potentially inspiring, it didn't allow full creative freedom. But there was one last outlet that would give Egad the edge he needed, and that was the realm of Subcon. Subcon is the area that Super Mario Bros. 2 takes place in. And while many people believe this game simply took place in Mario's dream, the sequel to the game, which is essentially the same game as the first, proves otherwise. In Super Mario USA, yeah, that's what it's called, you are once again within the world of Subcon. But this time, the King of Subcon wishes upon the power of the stars to call out Mario and his friends for help. Wart has once again returned to Subcon, and in the opening cutscene, you can see he simply hopped between dream realms after his first defeat. The game is actually a sequel that was played in conjunction to a live broadcast on the Satellaview that featured voice acting for the characters. Based on what we see within the game, it can be determined that Subcon is more so a magical world of dreams rather than simply a dream itself. Ward appears outside of Subcon in many instances in other media as well, as do several other things from the game. Given that this alternate dimension full of magical and bizarre properties is connected to the Mushroom World, 
that means things can be brought out of it. And I believe this is where the paint for the magical brush originates from. The Magic Potions and Dream Machine of Subcon. Now I know you're probably thinking that is a bit of a stretch, but hear me out on this. You encounter potions that when shattered have the power to form doorways to other dimensions. It's like Inception in a bottle. But beyond these potions, you also have a dream machine that was created to run within the realm of Subcon, which has the power to create monsters. Wart uses his machine to create monsters out of thin air, and I can't help but think there is some kind of link between these portal doors and the power behind the machine. We know these potions will work outside of Subcon, as Bowser has used them to escape time and time again. If Egad were to discover one of these potions and trace it back to its roots, he would ultimately have a blank canvas to do what he wants with. The dream machine still remains intact, and its functionality is still the same throughout both games. If this technology and potions were leveraged in the production of a brush that has roots in the dream world, then these figurative concepts would still be manifested the same way in the real world. This brush, which is blessed with the power to make dreams come true, much like Bowser Jr. states, is not meant to reside in the mushroom world because it has the capability to ruin this dimension. In its raw form, this inky liquid spewed without direction, it has the power to collapse landscapes and fuse people into solid objects. I mean, in Super Mario Sunshine, people literally sink into concrete, which is some pretty scary stuff. If Mario wasn't there to resolve the issue, there's no telling what would happen if chaos continued to spread before his anticipated arrival. Isle Delfino, to some degree, could have been erased from existence if the paint shifted to a full-on portal similar to the teleportation spots around the island. While this wasn't the case, the islander parts of it could have easily been cast into a realm similar to Subcon, or even beyond Subcon into Subspace. Subspace is basically the Inception-like place in Super Mario Bros. 2, where you enter a dark mirror world of the dream world, which is already confusing. Regardless though, the residual effects of the brush are unknown, and while Mario has the ability to wash away this painted substance, that doesn't mean it disappears into thin air. More than likely, it has gone on to contaminate the ground and water all around Isle Delfino, and upon accumulating through circulation, there is really no way to tell what dangers could be in store in the future. EGAD, destroying the mushroom world, one invention at a time. But now that I dumped that on all of you, I'd of course love to hear your thoughts. We covered quite a lot of ground in the Mario history books today, but at the end of the day, this is only my spit on the subject. Your thoughts are just as important, so please share them. Do you think the paintbrush draws power from the realm of dreams? How does it fit in with all the other magical paint scenarios in the Mario universe? And last, what kind of lasting danger does such a tool have on the mushroom world? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And with that, thanks for tuning in to this dimensional ride through dreamscapes. If you'd like to join me on my YouTube voyage and crack the hidden lore of the Mushroom Kingdom, then the subscribe button is just what you're looking for. Thanks for watching guys and gals, and until my next video, cheers. You made it to the end of the video, but wait, your quest isn't over yet. If you liked this video, I highly recommend you check out my Mario Theory playlist from Egad's questionable morals to the odd history of Mario's grandfather. On the flip side, you can find another one on my playlist on the right. Pixel Portals is a series I super enjoy, so I hope you will too. As always, there's a slew of other videos on my channel too, so regardless, I hope you enjoy.